glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me, glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me, glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me, must have been the hand of the Lord. Glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me, glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me, glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me, must have been the hand of the Lord. While I was singing, somebody touch me. While I was singing, somebody touch me. While I was singing, somebody touch me, must have been the hand of the Lord. While I was praying, somebody touch me. While I was praying. Somebody touch me while I was praying. Somebody touch me must have been the hand of the Lord. Well, glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me, glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me, glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me must have been the hand of the Lord. Let me take this opportunity to say that, that uh, I appreciate you watching us online or visiting us in service. It's also all, always a privilege. I had somebody to stop by this Wednesday night and say to me that they'd been watching us online and how that the Word of God had touched their hearts and that humbled me. And I pray that I can always preach the truth in love and love and, but also preach with conviction so I, I appreciate you watching us. Uh, if you feel a desire and ever feel uh, like the Lord's speaking to you to give to our local church ministries, I encourage you to do that. You can do that by going to easytithe.com and finding Prospect Church of God there. And uh, you can do that. And I believe there's a QR code there that you can use there to take you directly into our, our giving website. We appreciate that. We are a small church with a big heart. And trying to do ministry is tough in the day we live. So I would encourage you to do that if at all possible. And uh, not asking you to take tithe from your local church. Your tithe belongs to your local church, not ours. Uh, but maybe there's an offering that you would feel like giving to our church. And I would I'd really appreciate that. God bless you.
service. I'll stand and pray at this time. Then after prayer, we'll receive the offering and then go right into our worship. Heavenly Father, we give you praise and glory and honor. Thank you for this night that we're here to worship you, God. I pray for each and every request. Pray for each and every need, Lord God. Lord, I pray for Patrick's request that this family had lost this loved one, God, the Wells family, touch and minister comfort to this family tonight. This uh, need for the, the one with the stomach cancer, God, please move and intervene in her situation, oh God. Move and heal, oh God, I pray. Lord, I pray for Annie's mom and dad that you will save them, Lord God. They need you. They need salvation, Lord God. I pray for Sister Terry's lost family that you would save them. Glenda's lost family, Jackie and Gina. Lord, move in their lives. Save their lost family, God, I pray. Lord, I pray for Brother Bill's granddaughter who's going to have this surgery, God. Please move for her. Move for her, Lord God. Touch her and minister to her. Let your will be done, Lord. We know you're able to move and to do great things, Lord God. I pray, God, for a Yogi that has these doctor's appointments. Lord, please move, God, for Yogi tonight, Lord God. Be with him in these doctor's appointments that he's got coming up, Lord God. Lord, I pray for the, uh, the Bain family, Lord God. Comfort them tonight. Minister healing to them tonight. I pray for uh, Caden and Collier, Lord, that you would be with them tonight and minister to their needs, oh God. You're the, you know all about it, Lord God. And I pray you'll move for them and work for them, Lord, tonight. And I pray, God, that you'll be in this service, that the Holy Ghost will have his way in this service and all the unspoken needs. You know all about these needs. We just give you praise, glory, and honor. We thank you in Jesus' name. Brother uh, Chris and Brother Johnny, come and this time we'll receive our evening offering. This course is for our church expense, and we thank everyone for being faithful in their giving. Patrick, would you pray the blessing over our offering? going to go into praise and worship. I've asked Jessica and she has actually volunteered to help out and so I'm going to let her lead this song tonight. The words will be on the screen but if you need your hymnal this first song is page 177 in the hymnal.
should be our lifestyle and that's what this next song talks about every praise Save us You came from 
glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Sing it out loud. 
like you know what you're singing. Glory, glory, glory. Somebody touched me. Glory, glory, glory. Somebody touched me. Glory, glory, glory. Somebody touched me. It must have been the Sing that chorus one last time. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Somebody touched me. Glory, glory, glory. Somebody touched me. Glory, glory, glory. Somebody touched me. It must have been the hand of the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can you give him praise for touching your life? Amen. Hallelujah. Before you're seated in the house of the Lord, can you just give Jessica and Madeline and Anna up here a hand clap of appreciation? So good to have, the, have their assistance, Brother Jimmy. I failed to do this when we were praying. Let's have a word for Brother Gann tonight, Sister Gann tonight. He had to go to Lebanon, uh, his mother's sister, last sibling on that side of his family passed away and he has to do the funeral let's pray for him right now before i turn over to brother larry heavenly father please be at brother gan protect them give them traveling mercies as they travel to lebanon they do the funeral just move in that move in this situation comfort the family lord god i pray comfort the family lord right now we give you praise and glory and honor Praise your name, Jesus. Move, move with brother and sister again tonight, God. Comfort the family, Lord. Comfort the family, Lord, I pray. Comfort them, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, brother Larry Oliver, uh, he, he's been coming to some of our services, some of our fellowships, and I've really... Enjoyed getting to know Brother Larry. He's a blessing. He's a good man, and we're going to let him come and bring the word tonight, Brother Larry. Praise the Lord. Amen. You're glad to be in God's house. Amen. I'm glad to be at Prospect Church of God, a church that loves God and loves people. Yes. Amen. Amen. From the first time I walked through the doors, I felt at home here. And I appreciate each of you for coming tonight. I realized you could be any other place, but you chose to be a prospect. And that shows that your love for the Lord. That you come out on a Sunday afternoon just to worship. Amen. We have a special guest with us, Sister Marie and Brother Clayston. I'm going to ask Sister Marie to come and give us a song. She's a good saint of God. Thank you, Brother Larry. Sing here. Larry's a good friend. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's so good to be here in the house of the Lord. Amen. To know that you're born again. Hallelujah. By that precious blood of Jesus Christ. If it wasn't for the blood, where would we be? That precious blood that he shed for me and for you. And didn't have no respect to persons. Oh, he loved us all the same. And you know that's what it's all about. The love of God. Having the love of God in your heart, in your life. Praise the Lord. Some people, I, I don't know what to think if they don't give their heart to God. They don't know what they're missing. Because, you know, when he died on that cross, and he said, it is finished, he gave his all to us. All we have to do is accept it. Praise the Lord and claim it in his precious name and claim that precious blood. Praise the Lord. The song I want to sing is, I've got more to go to heaven for than I had yesterday. And truly, I have got more to go to heaven for 
I had yesterday. I don't know, but this song came to me, and I felt like that somebody here might need this t tonight. And so I've got to obey God, and I've got to sing this song. And you know, I know one thing. I have lost both of my children. Lost my daughter and my son. And I know how hard it is to lose a loved one. But you know, God gives you peace that you need. And the only way that you can get that peace is surrender everything to God and say, Lord, not my will be done. But thy will be done. Hallelujah. That's what it, it takes. That's what it's all about. You know, my daughter, God sent me an angel from heaven. She was born in Spina Bifida. She lived to be, I didn't think she'd live her lifespan. Was, I have to tell this for the glory of God. Her lifespan was only about 10 years. I said, Lord, you know how bad I wanted a little girl. And he let me keep her 46 years. That's a miracle within itself. And I praise God for it. They say, oh, how sad. No. No, it hurt me a lot of things. And I asked the Lord. I had a tendency to ask God. I said, Lord, I said, why was she born that way? Why, Lord? You know, he said, it's going to be for my glory. <laughs> and hallelujah, it was. It was for his glory. And she blessed people all of her life. And she sang like a little bird. She could really sing. And she's just such a blessing. And I just feel like that I feel, I feel very fortunate that God chose me to be her mother. And I took it, I took it, and I run with it. So tonight, I have got more to go to heaven for <laughs> than I had yesterday. Hallelujah. I've been through lots of valleys. I've climbed the highest hill. I've known the joy of living in the center of God's will. I've watched the angels come and take my love ones home to stay. I've got more to go to heaven for than I had yesterday. There's a golden street to walk upon a bell. more to go to heaven for than I had yesterday. Play it, brother.
There's a golden street to walk upon a bell of gold ring. A brand new angel in the choir I want to hear her sing. I've got a lot of friends awaiting when I walk through the gate. I've got more to God heaven for than I had yesterday. And the blood of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Amen. Tonight we want to draw your attention to First Peter, the first chapter. First Peter chapter 1, verse 17. And if ye call on the Father, who without respect to person judgeth according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, from where your vain conversation received by tradition of your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, Amen. as of a lamb without blemish yes. and without spot, yes. who verily was ordained before the foundation of the wor world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just again thank you for your word, Lord. Thank you for loving us, Lord. Thank you for your love and your mercy. Lord, we give you the praise and glory in Christ's name. Amen. 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 The next few moments, I want to be dealing with the subject, the precious blood of Jesus. The precious blood of Jesus. You know, many preachers today wouldn't touch this subject. No. For you see, when you begin to talk about the precious blood of Jesus, you have to deal with sin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Preachers don't want to preach about sin anymore. No, they, they want to make a, a place of comfort for the sinner to come in and, and to sit down and to enjoy some good Christian music, set through a, three points and a poem, and then go back out the doors the same as they were when they come in. The precious blood of Jesus. I submit to you tonight that we must deal with the seriousness of sin. You see, I know we live in a fallen world. And I know that sin is rampant and we grow kind of immune to sin. Yeah, that's right. We see somebody staggering down the road and we might feel a little bit of pity for them. Yeah. But we don't see them through the eyes of Jesus. Come on. We don't see them as a soul that Jesus died for died. on an old rugged cross. Amen. Somebody that he loved enough that he died for. Amen. Many times we just kind of turn our heads and 
walk on. Maybe we don't want to talk to them or intermingle with them because we, we just don't want to associate with sin. But sin is serious business. The Bible says that we've all sinned Sin. and fallen short of the glory of God. Amen. We were born into sin. Yeah, we're no amount of good works. Sin. Sin is missing the mark. Sin is disobedience, disobedience. to God. God hates sin. He hates sin in their lives. And one day sin will be judged. Now I don't know about you, but I want my sin to be judged here. I want my sin to be judged tonight before I leave this house. If I have sin in my life, I want it to be judged tonight and dealt with. For you see, on the day of judgment, it'll be too late. Yes. Be too late. That's right. I've watched three people pass from this life into the next life, take their last breath. And I see how fragile life is. Yes, it is. Yes. I was sitting as an 18-year-old boy on my mother's couch, and we were talking, and just a normal day. She just seemed to be happy. But she took a deep breath. And she went into eternity. And I realized how fragile life is. None of us has promised our next breath. And if we take our last breath, where will we end up? If you're a Christian, to be absent from the flesh is to be with the Lord. But if your sins are not under the blood, your next moment will be in torment. In a place called hell. I don't want to go to a place where I have no avenue of escape. Where there's no mercy. No grace. None. None of God's love and mercy and salvation. Nobody can preach you out of hell. No. Nobody can be baptized for you no. that you might have a second opportunity for salvation. No amount of pretty words the preacher says over your dead body will keep you out of a place right. called hell. Amen. So sin is serious. Yes. And dealing with sin is serious. Let's look for a moment and consider the nature of sin. Sin is deceptive. Very deceptive. Yes, it is. Sin would pat you on the back and say, oh, it's okay, Brother Larry. It's okay. God understands. He knows that you're just human and everybody sins. That's what sin will tell you. Come on. Sin disappoints. Sin will build you up yes. only to let you down. It will tell you to, that all you have to do is smoke some marijuana and you'll find peace. You won't have to be troubled about your troubles. But it doesn't tell you that a few years down the road you're a crackhead addicted to crack cocaine. You're 20 years old and you look like you're 45. Come on. Sin will tell you that, oh, just take a few shots of 
Jack Daniels, when you get home from work, it'll calm your nerves. But it doesn't show you that down the road you wake up and you're just trembling all over from being an alcoholic Amen. and no alcohol is in your system. Right. Sin disappoints. Yes, it does. Sin is destructive. Yes, it is. Everything that sin touches, it destroys. Right. Yeah. It destroys marriages. Yes. It destroys relationships between husband and wife and parents and children and brothers and sisters. Sin destroys. And sin brings about death. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. To some folks, death is instantaneous. Thousands of people this year have died from the opiate crisis. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thousands, even in Tennessee, mm-hmm. even in Cleveland, yeah. Tennessee, have died from fentanyl. Yeah, they go. Yeah. There's so many deaths in one month in Dayton, Ohio, that they had to erect temporary morgues to care for all the bodies. Think about that. Because hundreds in one weekend died in that one city. The wages of sin is death. And we've all sinned. So how do I deal with my sin? We deal with it by the precious Blood of Jesus. Amen. The precious blood of Jesus. Amen. That song that we sang, are you washed yeah. in the blood? Amen. In the precious blood of the Lamb. That's right. Are your garments white? Are they spotless? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Yeah. Another songwriter put pen to paper and he asked another question. What shall wash away my sin? Then he wrote an answer. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, how precious is that flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus brings us Redemption. So we are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. We're not redeemed by corruptible things as silver and gold, Amen. but by the precious blood of Jesus. Right. Amen. Precious blood of Jesus that he died on an old rugged cross and shed his blood for my sins. For the most foul of sinners could come to him and receive forgiveness of sin. Redemption. Redemption means to buy back something. We were all sold on the auction block of sin. Satan owned us. But Jesus went to an old rugged cross and shed his blood that he might redeem us. He might buy us back. We would be his. Amen. But why the blood of Jesus? Why not the blood of Abraham or Isaac or Jacob? They were good men. They had a covenant promise from God. Why not King David? Why not Peter? It's because of who Jesus is. Who Jesus is. You see, Jesus is God incarnate. 
is the eternal God. Yes. We serve one God manifested in three persons. Yes. God the Father, God the Son, right. and God the Holy Ghost. That's right. That's right. Three in one. Amen. That's the mystery of the Trinity. Yes. Three in one. Yes. One preacher explains it this way. He says, God came out of God and put upon Himself human flesh. And then He went back to God and He came out of God on the day of Pentecost as the Holy Spirit. So God manifested in God the Son, God the Father, and God the Holy Ghost. He is God incarnate. God before the foundation of the world. Before the worlds were created, Jesus was. Amen. He, was. Yes. he was with the Father. He was in God. He was there when an archangel, most beautiful angel, appeared before God. He was a director of the heavenly choir. He had musical instruments throughout his body that made the most beautiful sounds. Uh -huh. His name was Lucifer. Yeah. Yeah. And Lucifer got built up in pride. Yeah, he yes. And he was kicked out of heaven. Yeah. And Jesus said, I beheld Lucifer as he fell from, like lightning from the heaven. Yeah. How did he see him? Because he was there in the beginning. Yeah. Yes. Amen. God incarnate before the foundation of the world. He made himself an atom, if you will. We're all made up of atoms. And he implanted himself in the womb yes. of a virgin named Mary. And there he began to grow. He put upon himself flesh and blood. Yeah. And he done the things that little babies do in the womb as they grow. And then on that day, Mary pushed him into the world as a babe. The angels rejoiced. The angels rejoiced and said, Peace on earth and goodwill toward men. Amen. The angels knew that baby was. Mm -hmm. It was God incarnate. He lived a sinless life. Yes. His blood wasn't tainted by sin. That's right. So he could be the very perfect Lamb of God that was slain and offered up as a sacrifice for our sins. No other man could lay claim to that. Only Jesus. That's why there's no salvation in any other name but in the name of Jesus. Come on now. Not through Allah. No. Nope. Not through Muhammad. On, not through any of the other false gods. No, no, no. But only through Jesus. Jesus said, I am the door of the sheepfold. Yes. Yes, Anybody that comes in any other way is the same as a thief and a robber. Yes, right. Jesus is the way tonight. Yes. Amen. And through his precious blood, we have redemption. Blood was not tainted by sin. He lived holy. No sin. Didn't tell one lie. No, he didn't. Didn't covet one thing somebody else had. No, he didn't. Hello? I said he's, he was perfect. Holy. Holy, yes. Holy. 100% God. 100% man. Only Jesus could be the Lamb of God. It takes away the sins of the world. So when we're sinners, and we confess their sin, so if we confess their sin, He's faithful and He's just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We, we confess their sin. We place our faith 
in the blood of Jesus that was shed on Calvary. And we're born again. Isn't that the most beautiful expression? Yes. Most a beautiful expression to describe the Christian walk. Yes. Being born again. We who are sinners, deep in sin and the chains of sin at us bound, the most foul of sinners can be plunged underneath Calvary, can be cleansed by His blood. We come at an old-fashioned altar of prayer and we seek God and we, we pray and Lord, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Make a new person of me. And I'll live for you the rest of my life. At that instant, we're changed. Amen. We go down a drunkard and we come up cleansed. Amen. That's right. A new creature. Yes. Born. Born. A new spirit. He places His Holy Spirit within us. So that day come when I'll write my commandments up on your heart. Amen. And when we're saved, we receive the Spirit of Christ. A new nature. Amen. A new nature. Yes. Born again. Right. I was there when my son was born. And I got to hold him. I was the first to be able to hold him. Just fresh out of the womb. Tiny little fingers. Tiny little toes. Whole head full of hair. And I thought, how innocent. Little baby that knew no sin. Knew no sin. Innocent. And that's the way it is with you and I when we're born again. It's just as if we are new babies. Born again. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you redeemed tonight? Are you redeemed? I am redeemed. By the blood of the Lamb. Saved and sanctified I am. Hallelujah. Secondly, through the blood of Christ, we have reconciliation. First Chronicles 1.19 says, for it pleased the Father Amen. that in Him should all fullness dwell, having made peace through the blood of His cross. How do we make peace? Through the blood of His cross. Amen. By Him to reconcile all things unto Himself. By Him, I say, whether they be things on earth or things in heaven. And you, 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 you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath He reconciled. Amen. He didn't wait till we get to heaven to be reconciled. We're reconciled now. Amen. Now hath He reconciled. In the body of His flesh through death to present you, well, how? Holy. And unblameable, unreprovable in his sight. Amen. We once were alienated from God. Yes. Sin separated us. We were not subject to the promises of the old covenant. Alienated. No hope That's right. in this world. But through the blood of His cross, we're reconciled. We can come back into that relationship that's been fractured by sin. That He might present us holy. You mean I can be guilty of the most vile of sins and yet be declared holy? How amazing is that? Thank God. No matter what sin you've committed, 
If you put your blood, your faith in the blood of the cross, you'll be declared holy. 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 Holy and unblameable. Satan will try to blame you. Try to bring up those past sins. You know you're not saved. You're just putting on a front for them church people. Huh? All you have to do is point him back to where you first accepted Christ. Oh, Satan, you can't tell me that. Because I had an experience one time when I confessed my sins and I was reconciled back. And now, Satan, I'm holy. I've been declared holy, unblameable, and unreprovable in his sight. Reconciled. We also have justification. Justification. It's as though we were in a courtroom. Yeah. Picture a courtroom. Yeah. Some of you don't have to picture too much. You've had experiences there. <laughs> Uh, you stand there in the courtroom and you're guilty yeah. of charge. Oh, yeah. The on. charge is sin. That's what it is. On. And you stand there guilty. The judge is ready to pass the judgment. Yeah, yeah. He takes that gavel and he raises it up. And then from the back of the room we hear a voice. Come on, Wait a minute, judge. I'll take his punishment. I'll take his punishment. The punishment is death, but I'll take his punishment upon me. That's what Jesus did. And we're declared justified. It's more than just being not guilty. It means innocent. As though we had never sinned. Wow. Isn't the plan of salvation amazing? Isn't it wonderful? Shouldn't we come into God's house and worship Him and praise Him just for salvation? When I look back at what I was and what I am and what I hope to be one day. It's the hand of Jesus. Hand of God. Yeah, justified. Just as if we had never sinned. That's right. Then Hebrews 13 tells us that we're sanctified by His blood. Yeah. We don't talk much about sanctification. Come on. That's still a Church of God doctrine. Amen. Come on. That's around. still a Bible doctrine. Yeah, it is. Everything in the temple had to be set apart and sure sanctified. Is. Sure is. Sanctification is just a term that means set apart for God's use. Right. Set apart from sin That's right. and everything that defiles and set apart for God's use. You're set apart tonight. Saved and sanctified, I am. Amen. Set apart from my past sins. And I trust Him with my present sin. And I trust Him with my future sin. Sanctified. Set apart. Amen. Sanctification begins at conversion. Exactly right. yeah. Amen. Yeah. When you get up from that altar and you start your new walk in Christ, yeah. He sets you apart from those past sins. But it continues yeah. in our Christian life sure. as we grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. We can't expect a newborn babe 
to eat steak. Huh? Can't expect a newborn babe to know how to dress themselves. But yet we, as Christians that have been Christians for 20 years, want to judge a newborn Christian because of the way they look or the way they dress. What we need to do is love them. Disciple them. Teach them. Teach them. The older ladies should teach the younger ladies how to dress. I didn't know I was going to get on this. But we can't expect a newborn Christian to know all the ins and outs of Christianity. But what we can do is love on them. Tell them they're welcome in this church. See, this church isn't your church. It's God's church. If it belongs to Him, then He welcomes everybody. No matter what condition they're in. At the same time, we don't pat them on the back. We don't encourage them to continue in sin. No, we but we preach the word and we tell them that there's a way that they don't have to live any longer in that sin. That's right. That's right. Jesus is the way. He is. You don't have to live bound by drugs and alcohol no. or immorality. Jesus will set you free. He will. He'll do it. And that's a message that we have to take to the lost world. But then there's a part of sanctification that is our responsibility that's where we choose to do right instead of wrong that's right. we choose to praise the Lord instead of cursing God Amen. We, we choose to speak words of life and not words of death We choose not to give in to that old worldly flesh, but to live in the Spirit. He said in Romans that if you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. So the key is walking in the Spirit. We're able to come close to God. Sin separates us, but the blood of Christ brings us back yes. into that relationship. Think about it for a minute. We can enter into the very Holy of Holies. Amen. Enter into God's presence. Boldly enter into His presence. That wall of partition separated them in the temple was ran in two when Christ died on the cross from top to bottom Mm -hmm. signifying that the way of salvation is now open to everyone whosoever will let him come and drink of the water of life freely whosoever will precious blood of Christ. As I talked about entering into His presence, I get tired sometimes of church as usual. You know, church as usual, a lot of churches, they come in, they've never said one prayer through the week. Uh They've never prayed for the service for Sunday Uh night. They come in, sit on the padded pew with their arms folded, say, bless me, Lord, if you can. They enjoy the good gospel music. They're entertained by it. They halfway listen to a a message. Then they go out the door unchanged. But I long for the services where we have a season of prayer Amen. before we come to church. Yes. Then we can enter into His, his courts with praise yes. and into His gates with thanksgiving. We can come in here. We don't have to have 
a song leader pumping us up to get us into that, to get us to worship. We're ready to worship when we walk through the doors. To come in and to worship, to sing his praises, to lift our hands, to get into the Shekinah glory of the Lord. How I long to be in his glory. How I long to feel his presence in the service. Come on. I'm not satisfied going home and not being touched, not being blessed. They come in sick and they leave sick. They come in downhearted and depressed and they leave downhearted and depressed. They come in with sin and they leave with sin. God help us. Help us to realize this is His house and this is where His presence dwells. And we seek to be in His presence. Yes. I want people to leave not the same. Not the same. At least one step closer in our relationship with Christ. One step closer. When we're depressed, we leave here encouraged. Amen. There's healing in His presence. There's peace and joy in His presence. And we want to give that up by not praying, not preparing our hearts for worship. Praise the Lord. Again, I didn't know I was getting on all that. I just love the Lord, don't you? Amen. I just love being in His presence. And when we realize all that He's done for us, how can we not live for Him? Amen. We're able to come close to God. We can participate in His communion of suffering as we take the Lord's Supper. The cup and the wine represents His blood. Amen. And by His blood we have access to all the promises and all the provisions of the new covenant. Praise God for the new covenant. Yes. That's right. Praise God I'm not under that old law. Amen. I don't have to go out here and take me a goat or a lamb That's and right. slay it. Can you imagine? I don't think we in the Western or Eastern world can even realize the picture that is. That's right. That's right. That on the Day of Atonement, hundreds of lambs were slain. Yeah. Think of all that blood that flowed. Right. We can't imagine that. But I'm glad I ain't under that. Amen. But through the new covenant, there's a covenant when His blood, I have peace with God. Amen. Forgiveness of sins. Yes. I have the fruit of the Spirit. I have healing from my body. All because of the new covenant. I'm going to come to a close. In Revelation 1 5, it says that from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, and to him that loved us. To him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. First fruits of the dead, first begotten of the dead, his resurrection gives us hope that one day when we lay this old fleshly temple down, we too would be resurrected with him. And he loved us. And he washed us. Yes, he did. Washed us. Yes. Washed us, cleansed us. If he declares us clean, there's not a devil in hell can call us unclean. That's right. That's right. Can
Come on now. There's not a devil in hell can call you unclean. What Christ calls clean. He calls you clean because you've been washed in the blood. The precious blood of the Lamb. My sins are gone. You ask me why I'm happy. So I'll just tell you why. Because my sins are gone. And when the, I meet the scoffers who ask me where they are, I say my sins are gone. They were underneath the blood on the cross of Calvary as far removed as darkness is from dawn. In the sea of God's forgiveness. Hallelujah. That's good enough for me. Amen. Amen. Is that good enough for you? Are you good? Are you glad you're saved? I'm saved. I'm glad I'm saved. Galatians tells us that we're free from the bondage of sin. Yes, we are. Means I don't have to be bound by that addiction or those other things that have held me bound but the chains are broken and I'm protected from judgment yes thank God what are you saved from from judgment remember when the angel of judgment came to the land of Egypt the firstborn of everything in Egypt died that night. That's right. But not one death occurred in the land of Goshen. Why? Because that's where God's people were. And they had the blood applied to the mantles and the doorposts. He said, when I see the blood, I'll pass over thee. Church, when that death angel passes over you and he sees the blood. He'll pass over you. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I wonder tonight if there's one in the house that doesn't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I don't like to end a service without giving an opportunity because you never, you never know who's sitting in your midst. If you're here tonight and you never experienced the blood of Christ being applied to your life, why not tonight? Why not tonight? Why put it off till tomorrow? You have no promise of tomorrow. Don't put it off. Maybe you're here tonight and You've lived for God for a while, but you've got to confess sin in your life. Tonight's a night to deal with that. You can deal with that tonight before you leave the house. Maybe there's one sick in the house. You need to be anointed with oil. The prayer of faith to save the sick and raise them up. If not, can we just do what you have a custom doing here? Can the church just come forward?
doubts and it calls.